A few days ago, a new experiment was released. Yes, yes, yes! We can now use AI to tell a consistent, cohesive story, and I'm gonna try doing that. <laughs> Big thanks to Capital One Shopping for sponsoring a portion of this video. You know, here at Corridor, we like to joke that, you know, technology is just moving so fast, in a few years, you just be able to snap a few pictures of your friends with your phone and you know, generate a whole movie with them starring in it, right? And that's what we say to ourselves when it's 3 a.m. and we're sitting there grinding out rotoscoping and trying to match our 3D models to our backgrounds, and it all just seems like a fantasy that's so far away. But a few days ago, something new came out and it's gonna change all of this. This year, AI image generators burst onto the scene and I've become obsessed with the tech. I can't stop thinking about it. I think it's going to forever change entertainment, filmmaking, art, visual effects, but there's been one big problem that all of these generators have. There's no way for you to add knowledge to these AI image generators. So you can't add like your dog or your friend or how about like a fictional character that you invented or how about yourself, right? Nope, it's impossible. Well, a few days ago, a new experiment was released to try and fix this very problem. And because the fine folks at Puget have built us a computer capable of the burden of AI computation, we can actually run this experiment. And we're gonna see if we can solve this problem. Sam, we're gonna make history. Okay. You ready? Sweet, ready. All right, I'm going to put you into the computer. Okay, o open up that computer, man, I'll fit. So the first thing we gotta do, I gotta take like five to 10 pictures of you. I'm like a deep fake where I need like thousands. Last time I tried to steal someone's likeness with AI, I had to sift through nine hours of podcast footage. <laughs> so this is so far a breeze. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm gonna run these pictures of Sam through Dream Booth, which is actually free on GitHub if you wanna download it and mess with it. Dream Booth fixes a problem with AI image generators. The way this stuff generally works is this machine learning algorithm is going to associate visual patterns and forms with words. If I type in black cat, what's happening is it's associated the color that we identify as black with the word black. It's associating the forms that we identify as a cat with the word cat. And it's kind of bringing those two together when we type in black cat. Now, the problem is, if I want to do, say, a picture of Sam, the AI model has never seen Sam. It has no knowledge of Sam. And if I try to describe Sam, like if I say bearded dude, then I just get a bunch of random pictures of bearded dudes. And it's not the same guy every time. There's no way to have the same person every time. Dream Booth fixes this by letting us add new knowledge to this model and having it be consistent knowledge. And it does so in a way that doesn't screw up all the knowledge that's already there. I didn't realize it was so complicated by adding more data to the model, it risks the stability of the entire thing. Yeah. That's crazy. Once we have this all trained, we can now generate pictures of Sam. So let's make uh, a photo of Sam Gorski laughing. Oh, 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 wow! Oh, that's a, crazy. That's a deep, that's a deep laugh. I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, obviously, if you wanted to see a picture of me, we could look at the reference pictures you took, but obviously we have more power than just creating a simple photo. I want to be in, put me in Step Brothers. Which brother do you want to be? Uh, John C. Riley. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> It's, it is like me and John C. Riley had a baby. <laughs> Movie still of Sam Gorski as Morpheus from The Matrix, 1999. There we go. <laughs> now I'm starting to get vibes. Yeah, definitely starting to get vibes here. All right, movie still of Sam Gorski as Batman. Come on. <laughs> Freaking thick Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Huge Batman. <laughs> Thick Batman. <laughs> Why is he so thick? There we go. There it is. And I love how it, it's just your chin. It's smart enough to just put your chin in there. There, I mean, it's, yeah, it's Batman with like a little bit of a beard poking out. But I'm not like, I'm not blown away yet. It's like just photoshopping a little bit of chin hair onto Batman. You know, like it's not transformative. Maybe we could go a little weirder with this, maybe. Yeah, what do you want to see? Can we just do Uncanny Valley, Sam? Oh, there we go. <laughs> There we go, Uncanny <laughs> Valley Sam. It's like, well modeled. <laughs> Clearly some craftsmanship went into that 3D model of me. But it looks really weird. 
I, I just want to see something stylized, you know? I want to see something unique and stylized. Who's the best digital artist in the world? Uh, Greg Rutkowski. Yeah, I was about to say Greg Rutkowski. <laughs> He's clearly one of the top digital artists to ever live, so it should be in his style. Let's insert me into this. Oh! <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so, so it works. It, it works. turns out it works. <laughs> this whole time it hasn't been working. It actually works great. Oh, how about this uh, digital painting of the uh, God of War, Sam Worski face? Yeah, <laughs> I told you. Wow. I did it. I knew that was wow. going to work. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, hold on. A digital painting of Commander Price from Call of Duty, Sam Gorski. There it is. Yeah. It knew. It made me super grizzled. <laughs> I love it. I hope I, I hope I look like that one day. Uh, All right, so here we go. Got, we have some momentum here. Lego. Lego's the one. Oh, Lego? Yep. Done. Perfect. Done. Literally just first. Moving on, yeah. Oh, I got a weird one for you. GTA San Andreas screenshot. Okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> These are first results half the time, too. We got to do Old Snake. Big Boss from Metal Gear Solid. Yoji Shinkawa. Yoji Shinkawa. He is a trailblazer. We are going to take his soul now. <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> wow! Hell, yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! Um, yeah, dude. Uh... Isn't that so sweet? Dude, Yoji, wherever you are, man, holy <laughs> shit. Killing it, yourself. Yoji. Thank you. Dude, hold on. Just say, can you, is that saved? It's saved. That's Every my single. profile picture now. <laughs> hey, you know what? Let's, let's switch it over to me. I also have the train model on myself. Oh, yeah. Looking cool. Thank, uh, you, look, no no Thank you, Sam. No problem. Thank you, Sam. No problem. You know, you look great as Big Boss, too. That was really good. That was really, 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 really good. You know what? Maybe I'm really changing my mind about this whole AI thing. <laughs> Previously, I said, like, look, I don't want an Apple Watch. I don't want Facebook to read my biometrics and change that into AI-generated content in order to, you know, make ad money off of me. But if it does what this is doing, I might be all in. So one thing that's worth noting, I took a bunch of pictures of Sam with his camo jacket on. I took some pictures of him with a black shirt on. And a lot of these pictures, Sam has the camo jacket on. So for the first time ever, we can now create consistent characters which is honestly historic, meaning we can now use AI to tell a consistent, cohesive story. And I'm gonna try doing that. AI art's really cool. Like, oh, oh hold up. Hey, who's that? It's Jake. Hey, Nico. Hey, Jake. Hey, so I know that you are uh, neck deep in generating some amazing art right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super cool, man. You should see these awesome renders we're making. I also have a tool that's gonna be amazing and make life a lot easier. It's a huge thanks to Capital One Shopping for sponsoring this portion of the video. Forget digging for coupon codes that don't work <laughs> and searching endlessly for deals without results, okay guys? The free Capital One Shopping Browser extension instantly searches available coupons and automatically applies them to your cart across thousands of sites. Dude, I love it when I got a coupon code that saves me money, it's very satisfying. You might think, hey, it's Capital One and you gotta be a card holder in order for this browser extension to work. No, not true. You actually don't have to be a Capital One card holder to get these benefits. Maybe we can try one like... <laughs> experiencing benefits? Yeah, Sam Gorski experiencing incredible savings. And, and here we have it. I like where this is going. Well, imagine you're shopping on, say, Amazon, right? Toothbrushes on Amazon. Well, what the Capital One shopping experience does is it automatically goes out and sees if there's other available prices that are cheaper than what you're currently paying, and it helps you find those deals. Cheaper on than Amazon? That's a thing? Yes. Whoa. Guys, I think we've hit the nail on the head here, and I think we all understand, if you wanna get better deals as you shop online, all you need to do is sign up for the free Capital One shopping browser extension and you'll start saving instantly. So I'm gonna click the link in the description below and if you're interested, you can click the link in the description below too and get started today. Just, just click the link in the description below. And a huge thanks once again to Capital One Shopping for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now, let's get back to what other crazy ideas we can come up with using these tools. I can't get over how cool Sam looks 
when I say like Sam Gorski, evil wizard, the way the image comes out just immediately makes me think of a character and story. Like, yeah, I probably had his hand cut off in the, uh, in the in the battle with between you know men and orc 20 years ago, but now he's been delving into magic in hopes of bringing it back because he's getting into necromancy. Like, it just I just go right. I can just look at these pictures and I can just hit boop boop boop, generate generate generate, and make a new one every time. I want to try telling a story, so I'm going to go through the office. I'm going to capture a bunch of people's likeness in my AI Pokeball, and I'm going to put them into the system, and I'm going to generate this crazy epic fantasy tale. And I'm gonna inspire them when they see these characters the same way I'm feeling inspired. I'm gonna blow their minds. Thank you for joining me for story time. Woo! I used cutting edge technology to weave you guys into a tale that I'm about to tell. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the kingdom of Larian. A hustling and bustling place with happy people ruled by the kind and benevolent. Oh, 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 that's you! I did it! I did it! Oh, I, did it. Oh, I, did it. I made it, everybody! So, King Matthew, he's always thinking about what's best for his people, but it's hard being a king. Oh, 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 sitting on his throne, <laughs> making the hard decisions. Because you see, King Matthew is troubled. Oh. He's got the dread pirate Christian sailing the seas, blockading his porch. Oh! <laughs> Dude, you yes! oh my God. He doesn't just have pirates, he has sleazy merchants. Oh! <laughs> oh! This is just worrying. Oh. It just kind of looks like Jake. I always knew he had it in him. That is just. Yeah, that's just more what? <laughs> He's got the church oh, converting his people, corrupting them. King Matthew thinks, ponders, you know, kings. By definition, there's only one of them, all alone, somber, thinking, and then one day. One day, a dark man shows up, promising King Matthew to alleviate all his troubles. Yeah, very dark. He still could be anyone. <laughs> oh. Through the use of dark magic, the kingdom can be ruled. His enemies can be dealt with. Matthew becomes the jealous, mean, evil king. And together, they start ruling the kingdom with an iron fist. Oh, Hell yeah, bro. For you see, the dark magic they talked about is fire Dude, magic. look at that, here. Dealing away with, with their enemies, casting the church down, burning their enemies one by one. Whoa, wow. is this a children's light? <laughs> no, this isn't a children's book. <laughs> Matthew sits upon his fire throne. The kingdom struggles. Is it going to crumble and fall, people under their oppressor? The people need a hero. They need a champion. Oh! I am here for you! <laughs> That's crazy! That's perfect. Jordan the Brave Knight fought in many wars, always for good, never for evil. Dude, this just makes me ashamed of who I really am. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan the Knight hears tales of this dark sorcerer that has infected the mind of King Matthew and is therefore bringing the kingdom down. Infected his fingers too. <laughs> yes. This Look, AI out. can't draw hands, all right? So <laughs> just ignore the hands. And he confronts him. He tells him that he needs to be banished from these lands. He needs to go, otherwise he will kill him himself by his sword. Of course, Sam the fire sorcerer is like, mere mortals, you mean nothing. And he fires up his magic, surrounds himself in flames. As Jordan the Knight stares him down, he thinks back, the one bit of advice, the one item he got that's going to make all the difference in this battle. For on his way into town, he stopped at a tavern where he met a gnome. <laughs> that's better! No, that's better! Wait, wait. Oh, wait. I love that we all got upgraded and Fenner just got downgraded. Yeah, yeah. All, the way, cool. all the way down. For you see, Fenner has a very special item, which is a sword forged from a meteorite. And that sword always glows red hot. He strike down anyone, including the most magical of mages. And so he gives that sword to Jordan the Knight and tells him to be careful with it because it might be his downfall. So Samwise the Fire Mage, he is casting his fire spells, preparing to destroy his enemy. Jordan pulls out the meteorite sword, which glows red hot, and charges in for the fight. But Samwise is slinging fireballs left and right, and Jordan's no match for the magic. So oh! <laughs> The heroes deserve <laughs> Remember me fondly. As the light fades and everything goes black, 
Jordan the Knight sees a vision. A vision of a man in a white cloak approaching him. Side of the Bro. building. Wow. Oh my god. Perhaps a former emperor, the spirit of a former emperor, or the founder of this land, he comes to Jordan in a vision and he grants him the feather of life and he brings him back. And Jordan the Knight springs up, born anew, ready to fight. Take him down, Jordan. And he charges and he calls his horse, leaps over the flames, and he slices down Samwise, the fire mage, casting him off the walls of the castle. And into the waters below. Where he fades away. Never to see you again. <laughs> you know, this is all in a day's work for Jordan the Knight. He's a man who gives himself every day selflessly for the kingdom. But you know, the real question is what happened to King Matthew? For the evil slipped away from his mind, and he grew remorseful and full of regret, and he needed to make his wrongs right. And so he gathers all his people and brings Jordan the Knight, and he tells them, no, I'm wrong, this man will protect the kingdom forevermore. And he gives him many medals and honors. And he will rule as a benevolent king forever after. And Jordan will be there to protect him and guide him along the way. In the kingdom of Larian, where they lived happily ever after. Those images are objectively ten times beyond what I thought was possible. Oh, yeah. The so, water detail oh my with God. Sam's shots are, is so incredible. Some of it just looks so photo real. I mean, even like the painterly stuff, it just feels so artistic. Like it was, it had a human touch to it. This I originally typed a wizard in black robes, drowning, screaming underwater. And then I, I don't get Sam, it's just a guy going rah! But it's, you know, it had the beginnings of Sam. But the thing is when I don't type Sam's name, I get a way more flexibility. So I can do something like this. Because otherwise if I typed in Sam's name, it'd be like a headshot, which is what you kind of see for the other ones. So I, I don't include Sam's name, I get a wacky picture, but the guy at least kind of has a beard, still kind of looks like Sam. And then I use in painting, and I just select the face, I go make it look like Sam now. Matt, that's your new album? Yeah, <laughs> with a lot more fingers. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more fingers, but it wow. gets the level of my arm hair. It's at well, it's a it's little a bit light. shy. It's yeah, a little, it's a little light on it, but still. Though. And let's not forget. Yeah, that's insane. Dude, these are the sickest ones. Yeah, they have to be. Yeah, these are the sickest ones. They have to be. These look like you belong in Game of Thrones. Yeah. If there were ever motivation to start taking steroids. Yeah. yeah. The stuff of like when the hood is off, Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like yeah, that's yeah, it's like a photo like like a Photoshop picture. Insane. The only one I didn't recognize was Fenner. The first, I no, the I think Fenner's room. the most realistic one. <laughs> spot on. It was spot on, bro. <laughs> that's so good. It's like your face just totally sunken into this massive head. <sighs> Greg Rutkowski. Everything looks better when you type Greg Rutkowski. But the thing is, he's a real artist doing real work. Is it our art? Is it his art? Where do we stand there? You know, I didn't want to end this video without talking about these moral implications. I don't have all the answers. Like, we're literally on the frontier here. We're just figuring it out. There's certainly a, a world where it's okay to pull influences from other artists and other people. We, as human beings, we do that all the time. When a piece of software is doing it, when does that become influencing and when does that become copying? I would just encourage all of you out there, if you're making art and you're using other people's inspirations, do something to make it your own. Don't just type a picture of Sam by Greg Rakowski and then post it online saying, look at my art. Because the way this program works, it's kind of like going to a giant library filled with billions of images and you finally find the one you're looking for. What are you doing beyond that to make it your art? Anyways, leave your thoughts down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think because this is certainly a powerful tool. It certainly enables many people to create beautiful images. We're gonna have to figure this all out together. So let's do it.